Hello and welcome to a new video. This is for pre-algebra. It is lesson three. I'm following the Matthew C. homeschool curriculum and we're going to talk about multiplying negative numbers. If you would like to follow along with the notes page of your own, then please click the link in the description or maybe it'll pop up up here so that you can click it that way. But I do have a free notes page that you can use to follow along with this lesson. So far, this year we've been talking about negative numbers and that has been something that has been kind of new to us. So we added them together in lesson one, we subtracted them in lesson two, today we're going to talk about multiplying them and we need to remember that negative numbers are just numbers that help us represent opposites basically. That we, they only need to be there so that we can make there be a difference between having um, having something and not having something, okay? They're opposites in that way. So let's take a look at what multiplying really means. Let's go over really quickly what does it mean to multiply so that then we can add to that the idea of what does it mean to multiply negative numbers together. So multiplication is just a way to do repeated addition more quickly. So something like 6 times 2 when you first learned about multiplication uh, was when you back when you were like do it like oh addition I'm so cool I can add and then we add a multiplication into the mix and so you might have seen something like 6 times 2 written out right as we could write it out as 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 there's six twos there right so 6 times 2 is another way of saying add 2 together 6 times but it also is a way for us to say 6 plus 6, right? Aren't those two things the same? So it doesn't actually matter which way we think of this, which is going to be super helpful for us whenever we're multiplying by negatives conceptually. It's helpful that it, we can do it either way. We can think of it either way. So 6 times 2 is 12, and that's either because we're taking 2 and adding it together 6 times, or 6 and adding it together twice, or in reality, we just have it memorized, right? 6 times 2 is 12. Before we talk about negatives, though, on the next slide, I do want to really quickly point out that there's a couple other ways that we write multiplication, just in case I accidentally write it that way, or in case you see it written that way. Um, sometime soon, like we're in pre-algebra right now, sometime soon you are going to see the, the X multiplication type symbol stop being used because we're actually going to want in algebra to start using x as a as a thing in math and then it would be confusing if we kept using that x right so you may see it just as two numbers next to each other but both of them are in parentheses like i have up here six times two the six and the two are in parentheses they don't need to have parentheses for any other reason than just to show us that it's six and two next to each other as opposed to having 62 uh, but even more common is using this dot for multiplication. If you see a dot, that's what is being said, is that we're multiplying those things together. And the other thing I want us to think about really quick is when do we multiply in real life problems? Uh, what is what is helpful? What, why do we multiply things? And, and basically it helps us whenever something is happening at the same rate over time. And so if you have something that's happening per day, per week, per month, that's when we can multiply instead of having to add or per item like when you go to the store if you buy five of the same item that are all priced the same you can multiply to find the answer there so that's some real world things that make us multiply okay so now that we have negative numbers that we're throwing into the mix we've got four situations we need to think about fortunately one of them we're already used to we could have a situation right where we're multiplying two positive numbers together We've been doing that for years, eons, decades. Okay, just for sure years. Five times four, they're both positive. We still get a positive answer. Nothing changes that. So we can write 20 here, or you could write a plus and a 20 if you really wanted to. But our answer to just a positive times a positive is a positive. And you may notice, by the way, if you did do lesson two together with me, that we're going to see something that is consistent from something we talked about last lesson that is happening here on this lesson too. So that's great when math is consistent, which it usually is. So let's think about a situation like number two, where we have a positive times a negative. We've got a positive three times a negative two. 
Now what I want you to remember is that this is repeated addition and that we get to choose how we do that repeated addition. What I mean by that is I can choose to think of this as negative 2, oh, hang on, has negative 2 added together three times. And I can choose to do that so that conceptually it makes sense what is happening. If I'm adding together negative 2 three times, well, negative 2 plus negative 2 gives me negative 4, and then I add another negative 2, and I get negative 6. So it makes sense, right, that my answer to this would be negative. And so what we're going to find out here is that when I do a positive times a negative, I should get a negative answer. So positive times positive, we get positive still. Positive times negative, we get negative. Now, this next one on number 3 is actually the same kind of situation. Negative 6 times positive 4, I still have one of my numbers is negative, and one of them isn't. So, double check if you'd like. We could say that this is negative 6 added together four times to help reinforce to us whether or not this should be a negative number. So I've got negative 6 four times. So does it make sense that when I do negative 6 plus negative 6 plus negative 6 plus negative 6, I'm consistently like getting more negative, right? Kind of if I want to think of this like debt, I've, I've, it's like I have it's like I'm losing money um, four times, right? I'm losing six dollars four times. So overall, that's going to be a debt that I have. I don't magically not have a debt because it's four times. Um, each time I add that negative six, I get more and more in debt. So the answer to this is six times four, which is 24, but with a negative number. So you actually can treat these problems just occurred to me to mention this. You can actually treat these problems as kind of two questions. One question is, what is the number? The other question is, what is, is it positive or negative? So when you're thinking about what the number is, you're just taking the numbers themselves and multiplying them together. So five times four in the first one, three times two in the second one, six times four in this third one. And then we also have to think about, should this be positive or negative? So what we've seen so far is two positives means it's positive, one negative means it's negative, and it doesn't matter if it's the first number or the second number that's negative. As long as one of them is negative, it makes our answer negative. And so let's look at this last case. Now, where you're at right now in pre-algebra, it is a little tricky conceptually for me to explain why this is the way it is as far as like using that similar thing of talking about debt or things like that. And that's because uh, it just doesn't, I, I don't know, it doesn't quite make as much sense. The things that I can think of to show you about why a negative times a negative does what it does are kind of beyond where we're at right now. So part of this is going to be an, a trust exercise. You'll have to trust me that this is true. Part of this is a, there are certain things about math that just have to work the way they do, otherwise everything falls apart. This is one of those cases. Maybe you can come up with an analogy for why this is the way it is that makes sense to you. Um, but I'm, I've been racking my brain for like two days on this trying to think of like, okay, why, why is this the way it is? And I've been coming up empty. So negative five times negative three, if we think about what we've already done, it should not make sense that negative 5 times negative 3 would give me a negative answer. Why wouldn't that make sense? Because we've seen that one negative overall makes our answer negative. And we've seen that no negatives overall makes it positive. So it's kind of like the question is, well, what does it mean if we have two negatives? What should make sense? And so what we're hoping to have like make sense to us from here on out is that having two negatives actually makes a positive. And I actually talked about this last lesson. I used the analogy of grammar, how whenever you use a double negative in a sentence, it actually makes your sentence affirmative, right? If you say that you don't never do something, well, you're actually saying you, you do that thing, right? Um, and that's why we don't like using double negatives in English, because it doesn't make sense and it actually means the opposite of what you're probably trying to say. So two negatives here, just like we saw last lesson, whenever we just had two negatives next to each other when we were subtracting, 
are going to turn into a positive. And that's going to be true all through math, that two negatives multiplied together or two negatives right next to each other are going to change into a positive. So this last possibility, negative 5 times negative 3, is going to give us positive 15. And that's going to be th this idea of one negative makes a negative, two negatives makes a positive. That's going to keep recurring, and that's going to be important for us to internalize. So let's make sure that we understand how this works. I went ahead and I did uh, an example here with four problems. I've got example two that has two normal problems and a word problem, and then I've got a now you try that has two normal problems and another word problem. So I've got lots of practice here to walk you through. And if at any point you feel like you've got the hang of this, stop the video, try the next problem, start it back up and see what happens. Because part of this whole thing is that you have you have to be willing to take a guess and see if you're right. And one of the best times to do that is when you have somebody here who can tell you whether you're right or not and, and hopefully tell you why the answer is what it is. So if you feel like you may know what's going on, go ahead and pause the video right now and see if you can figure out this first one, positive 11 times negative 7. Okay, I'm going to assume that we're all ready to go now. Positive 11 times negative 7 we're answering two questions. First off, what is 11 times 7? It is 77. And if what you are ending up tripped up on here is multiplication uh, of the numbers themselves, because you have shaky multiplication table knowledge or things like that, it's a whole other issue than knowing whether this is positive or negative, right? So that may be something you want to work on separately, is your multiplication tables and multiplying in general. So if you answer our first question, 11 times 7 is 77. Our second question, should this be positive or negative? The answer to that depends on how many negatives we have. We have a single negative, so this should be a negative 77. I think once we get the hang of this, this is easier than adding or subtracting. I think the rules make more sense. Um, so hopefully you come to decide that as well. The real issue ends up when we feel like the rules are different, right, for adding and subtracting than they are for multiplying, and so it's that we're memorizing a different set of rules that can be frustrating. I get that. I get that that's frustrating. So um, we just gotta we just gotta try to internalize these so they stop feeling like rules and just start feeling like, hey, this is how the world works. Okay, negative 10 times 9, positive 9. So 10 times 9 is 90. Is this a positive or a negative? There's one negative. So this is negative, negative 90. C, negative 7 times negative 2. Well, 7 times 2 is 14. A negative times a negative is positive. So this should be positive, 14. And again, you can either put the plus or just write 14, whichever one you would like to do. D, positive 9 times negative 31. Now this time, there's some trickiness just to multiply this out. I'm going to go down here and work this out. We call this vertically right? I'm going to figure out what 31 times 9 is this way, and then write my answer up here. And one of the things that is that whenever you do this, sometimes it's even easier to forget to check if it's a negative or positive answer. So we do not want to forget to check that. This is 279. We have a positive times a negative, so that makes it negative 279. So how are you doing so far? Hopefully this is starting to make sense, or maybe it already makes sense. Let's do another example. Okay, example two. And again, if you want to pause to see if you got the hang of it, go for it. Negative five times negative nine. Well, the numbers themselves multiplied together is 45, and a negative times a negative makes a positive. Uh, an analogy I like to, to use, I've, I've used it in Algebra 1 in the past few years that I've taught it, is when two negatives get together, they just like leave the problem and go hang out, right? So negative 5 times negative 9, those two negatives are like, hey bud, let's go and play Xbox because we don't need this math problem. So they go and they hang out someplace else and it makes our answer positive. So if that helps you as an, an analogy, you're welcome. Uh, B, 12 times negative 4. Well, 12 times regular 4 is 48, and a single negative makes this negative overall. So, negative 48. Think of it like negatives are very, really powerful, right? Having one negative can overall make your answer negative, just like having like one negative comment in your day can really mess with your day, which that's kind of a sad analogy, but 
that's how this works. One negative makes this overall negative. Well, let's look at this word problem. K Steve, which is me by the way, I spent a lot of time trying to come up with this word problem, so we'll see how it goes. K Steve has pencils available for students to use if needed. If she lends out two pencils a week, how many pencils will she have after five weeks? So this idea would be that since I'm lending out two pencils, I'm actually losing two pencils. And like I mentioned earlier, this idea of doing something at a constant rate, so we're losing two pencils each week, that means we're going to multiply. So we want to know how many pencils we have we will have lost basically after five weeks. So we want to do a negative two times a positive five and we'll get negative ten. And then we think negative ten what? Negative ten pencils. And this is kind of a weird thing to say I have negative ten pencils, but that's the whole point. I don't have negative ten pencils. I've actually that negative is saying I've lost ten pencils. So um, this is the kind of thing that you you might see as far as word problems go in a section like this. Now you try. So you may have been already doing this before, but if not, please pause the video and try these three problems and then start the video back up or start it back up if you get stuck or whatever it might be. But please try it on your own. I'll just sit here and wait. Okay, welcome back. So that's the beauty of pausing that I didn't actually have to pause myself. Okay. Negative 6 times positive 8 gives me 48, but it is negative because I have a single negative. So negative 48. B, negative 5 times negative 12, the answer to that is 60, and it's positive because we've got two negatives. The two negatives go and hang out someplace else. We don't even need to worry about them anymore. And then C, we've got another word problem. Due to a cold front, the temperature is falling by 4 degrees Fahrenheit per hour. How much will the temperature have changed after 4 hours? So falling is an idea that we might decide, oh, let's make this a negative. So negative 4 is what we're falling. It wants to know how much we will have fallen after 4 hours. And so negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if I said this earlier. Typically when we have word problems and we're actually talking about a thing, we label it with whatever units just to make it clear what we're talking about. So this is negative 16 degrees Fahrenheit. It also can help you make sure that you did it right because if you're, if you do some math and you're like, well I think this gave me something that was not degrees Fahrenheit, that's a clue that maybe you did it wrong. So there you go. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, it would be super great if you did that. Subscribes, likes, and comments all help YouTubers with what they're doing. So I'd love a subscribe. I'd love for you to comment and tell me how this is going. Tell me if you uh, liked my analogies or if you thought they were not so great. And I will take that constructive criticism to heart. Um, if you need more resources, then please check out my website which is up here above my head or is also linked in the description, adding resources to that all the time. And I, my goal here is just to help you learn math. So hope you will, uh, you know, take advantage of that. Thanks. Bye.